Welcome back to Cosmolics Anonymous. I am your favorite new mama, Bougie Vintage, and today's video is Love and Hip Hop. You are very welcome. I see that you guys really tried to get the 5,000 likes, but you weren't successful. So this is a courtesy video. <laughs> I want my 5,000 likes for next week's episode. If there's no 5,000 likes, there will be no video. This was just because I saw y'all really put in the effort, and I was like, the episode was good. Okay, so I'm like, let me just come here and do an episode for you. I know you guys are feeling my orange her, honey. I am serving you just Britney realness. <laughs> I'm actually serving you Starfire. I got the green in there and all that. Okay, looking like a candy. Anyway, let's get this shit popping. So the episode started off with Lyrica performing. So Lyrica was performing her new single and the audience, aka VH1 Extras, we're singing right along with her like they knew the damn song. I mean, they could have been her real fans, but I highly doubt it. If you were there, let me know. <laughs> and so Princess and Brooke Valentine are there to support her. So Brooke and Princess are actually meeting for the first time. They don't know each other. I guess they know of each other, but they do not know each other. They're not really friends per se. Anyway, Princess compliments Brooke on her outfit or like how she looks. She looks pretty as well as the ring on her finger. And so Brooke gets to talking about the ring on her finger and she says that her and Marcus are engaged. So they're like, oh my God, congrats. But then she says that Marcus just doesn't know it yet. I said, Lord Jesus, please help this child. <laughs> Help her, Lord. Help her. Because she is all kinds of cray-cray. In my honest and humble opinion, I think that Brooke is way too pretty to be acting this way about Marcus. Like, she is way too pretty. The delusion is too much. I don't like it. Anyway, so when she says that, Lyric is like, so you're claiming an engagement and he didn't even ask you to marry him. And so Brooke acknowledges that she knows it sounds crazy, but she said what she said, honey. And although she's 100% aware that this is something only a crazy woman would do and say, she goes on to say that right now, Marcus is allowed to do what he wants, basically be with anybody he wants to be with, as long as it's clear that at the end of the day, him and her will be walking down the aisle together. I said, ain't no damn way, ain't no damn way I'm listening to this woman talk this nonsense right now. There's just no freaking way that this is real life. Absolutely no way. Why isn't this yellow like super duper pigmented? This is my Juvia's Place yellow. I gotta throw some MAC on this, honey. Brooke also states that she is celibate, which is why her and Marcus have this so-called agreement. There we go. And I was like, eh, no ma'am, <laughs> no ma'am. If your man can't wait with you, then that's not the person for you. You shouldn't be with that person. I mean, you could tell them, hey, you're free to do whatever you want to do because I'm not giving you any pom pom, but they're not supposed to take the bait. They're supposed to say, no baby, I love you, I'll wait for you. I guess she figures he'll cheat on her anyway, so she might as well give him the pass, let him do what he wants to do, and get married to him later. But honey, I don't want you after a hundred bitches done had you. That's, that's definitely not the tea. So they start talking about the whole Ray J situation because obviously Princess deleted all her photos off of Instagram of him. And she also changed her handle, which I didn't even know about. I was like, oh my gosh, supremely met. Okay, this eyeshadow palette is not, ha what's going on right now? No, it's patchy. Where's my crayon case palette, Chad? Yeah. So yeah, Princess had deleted her Instagram handle because it used to say Norwood, but she changed it back to just Princess Love. And so she was telling them that she does not even want to do the gender reveal. But Princess asked Lyrica about the Kate Michelle drama. And of course, Lyrica starts to recap it. And then, of course, she brings up the whole safari thing. And then the tea began to spill ever so fluidly. In confessional, Miss Brooke Valentine starts to let us know 
that she knows all about that safari tea because she was there. I said, bitch, <laughs> this just got interesting. Do I need to like apply some paint pot or something? Like, why is this not working? So Brooke says that Lyrica and Safari were flirting a lot at some Facebook Live event or Facebook Live interview thing they did. And Safari was flirting with Lyrica and it was really intense flirting. And Lyrica was not brushing it off. Like, she was playing right into Safari's hand. She basically confirmed K. Michelle's tea. K. Michelle told y'all she ain't gotta lie about nothing and she definitely was not lying. When she was in confessional spilling this tea, I was just like, what kind of friend is this? Like, why would she even go in confessional and basically air out Lyrica's business? I was like, this is three much. Like, I don't think this is acceptable friendship behavior, but hey, to each their own, honey. Ray J ends up popping up on Princess and... Obviously, Princess is irritated because she hasn't seen Ray J in, I believe she said, six days. He has not come home. So she's like, why the F are you here? So Princess tells Ray J he needs to tell his family the truth about what really happened as to why she posted what she posted on social media. She tells him that he needs to make her his family apologize to her she doesn't need to apologize to them. Apparently, Ray J's mom and Brandy were both posting about Princess on social media, basically in retaliation to what she was posting or the meme she posted about Ray J. By the end of this conversation, Princess was telling Ray J that she's seriously, uh, seriously considering becoming a single parent. I was like, oh my God, those are some serious words. <laughs> I was like, that's a little much, you know, I get couples fight and argue, but this is what I was saying last week when I said they should have never, never have gotten married because they have been having problems since jump. So in confessional, A1 starts talking about how him and his wife had to drag K. Michelle. He was at the studio and Marcus ends up pulling up on him. So Marcus is talking about how he didn't move on from Brooke and I'm like, does Brooke know this, honey? Cause I don't think, <laughs> I don't think Brooke knows that you moved on. I really don't think she knows. But as Marcus continued to talk, I got more and more confused. He said that Brooke basically, you know, didn't allow him to do things the right way and like get on his one knee and propose to her, she kind of jumped the gun with that situation. Then he stated that she allows him or she basically said like, go do your thing. And the way he's talking, it makes it sound like they've broken up or they're on a break, some type of temporary situations going on. But then he said he's dealing with a couple of options and it's getting serious. And I'm like, how does that work? If she thinks that you guys are getting married, how are you gonna get serious with somebody else? I'm confused as to what this break really is. So he tells A1 he's trying to keep it drama free, unlike him, and he calls A1 Twitter fingers. They show A1's tweet. I didn't even read it, my head was down when it came up, but um, A1 starts to tell him about the K. Michelle drama. So then A1 brings up Safari. Arcus then spills the tea and he says that that's not the first time he's hearing about the safari drama. And so of course when he hears that, Aegon's like, what? Like, why do you know about this? <laughs> it just brought to my attention, why the hell are you, you know? So when Marcus said that, I said, this is going to get so freaking messy. Uh, what just happened? Shit. So of course when, when Marcus says this, this tea is too hot for Mr. A1's mouth, honey. It's scalding. He needs a whole new mouth, a mouth transplant, bitch, because this shit is burning hot. <laughs> so of course he starts telling A1 what Brooke told him. And A1 obviously says that's messed up because Safari's supposed to be the homie. And that's basically where that conversation ended. So the next scene is Kimberly and Bridget, and when I say that them two bitches look like they just finished having a hot, steamy shower together, <laughs> yeah, they look like they just, like they do stuff together, like, you know? Like they ain't just friends, if you know what I mean. And so I started to wonder if K. Michelle bleaches because 
Oh, because she looks so light on camera. Like, I thought Kay was like more brown skin, but she looks really light on camera. Her foundation almost looked like it was bordering casket ready. So, she looked really pretty. It's hard to explain it. Like, she looked really pretty, but it still looked like, you know, she could have used a little bit of bronzer on that face. You feel me? She starts filling Bridget in on the drama. Bridget is trying to mend the relationship between K. Michelle and Paris because they were really good friends. K. Michelle admits that Paris called her and K. then starts to, or Kimberly, sorry, starts to then elaborate on the situation and she basically explains what happened between her and Paris more in depth and a bitch was right it was uber just like I said <laughs> I don't know why Paris tried to make it seem like it was some elegant car service it was literally uber <laughs> anyway K. Michelle basically says that she sent her assistant she was pregnant so she sent her assistant to to the store to get her some ginger ale and crackers and her assistant came back and said that her credit card was declined because of fraudulent activity and then that's basically when she found out that paris had used her card for uber in my mind i was like who the hell buys ginger ale and crackers on their credit card i don't understand <laughs> But that's none of my business. I'm like, you didn't have you didn't have a five dollar bill, sister girl. <laughs> like you didn't have a twenty dollar bill on you. Why are you sending your assistant to the store with your credit card to buy ginger ale and crackers? You know. Anyway, at the time that it happened, she did ask Paris why she was using her credit card, and that's basically how their friendship ended. Kimberly asks, uh, what's her name? Bridget, why? she wants Paris and Kimberly to talk again and she tells her because I know how much it hurt you and so when she's saying this I'm like okay I get it Paris should have never used K. Michelle's credit card I, I get that I'm just confused as to why you know Kimberly is so hurt over this uber trip like what did she take the Uber to go fuck Kimberly's man? Like, why is Kimberly so, you know, pressed about this $50 credit card thing, you know? Anyway, Kimberly admits that she does indeed miss Paris. And so she's going to consider, I guess, rekindling that friendship. She does say that uh, Paris was a great friend to her. And she also says that since she's been having health issues due to her surgery, it's really kind of put things in perspective for her and she's reached out to people that she's fallen out with and I guess, you know, she just is trying to start fresh with everybody. So in this next scene, Apple Watts meets up with the one and only Lyrica Honey and the whole point of this meeting is obviously to resolve whatever happened at the party the other night. So during this conversation with Lyrica, Apple actually opens up and, you know, she keeps it real, a little too real, <laughs> about her struggles and selling her body and doing this, that, and the third to make ends meet. And, you know, she just was keeping it real with, with Lyrica. But her whole objective for meeting up with Lyrica was to clear the air because she wanted to ask Lyrica herself if she can work with A1 because you guys remember last season it was being said that Lyrica is a jealous type and she doesn't want to work with or she doesn't want A1 to be working with other people but she breaks it down to Apple and tells Apple the, that that was just you know a rumor her only issue was that they weren't done working on her album and he was going ahead and working with other people when he's not supposed to be anyway their conversation was good vibes only super good vibes only okay and then we see mr. Uh, a1 walking in storming in he big mad <laughs> so basically he came in, he greeted the ladies, he was talking to Apple Watts, and then he in, he ends up inviting Apple Watts to his promo shoot. 
that he's going to be having in a couple days and she agrees to come and then he basically dismisses Apple and tells her that he needs to have a conversation with his wife. I said, oh, it's about to go down, okay? So I was super hyped. I was like, how is this going to play out? So Lyrica was like, oh, you got a little bit of an attitude going on. What's up? What's the problem? A1 ain't here for the long talking, ain't here for the chit chat, honey. He got straight to the pizzoint and he asked uh, Lyrica, what's up with you and Safari? I said, oh Jesus, what is really going to happen right now? I can't deal. So Lyrica repeats his question back to him and she's like, what's up with me and Safari? And then she says, he's cool, that's the homie. He's cool with you, he's cool with me. So what's the issue? I said, uh-uh, bitch. <laughs> I said, uh-uh. When a motherfucker repeats your question back to you, it's because they're thinking about what they are. They need to say. So A1 says to her, you're trying to fuck him. And she starts laughing. I'll insert the photo. <laughs> she starts laughing and she says, I'm heated, okay? She's mad, she's big mad. So A1 says, look, I know K Michelle says a lot of things but she's really not the type to lie like she doesn't have a reason to lie so Lyrica is obviously upset now because her husband is believing the person that she has beef with right now over her so Lyrica is like to him so are you telling me you believe that lying ass bitch so then she starts to talk about how uh when she threw a surprise party for A1, she had text Safari. Also, when they were in New York together, her Safari and him had a group chat. A1's like, I've never been in a group chat with Safari. I said, how are you gonna lie to your husband about his group chat? How are you gonna make up something and say, tell him he was a part of it, but he knows that he wasn't. I was like, no, this is too freaking much right now. Like what is really good so she tells a1 yes you have been a part of a group chat with us so of course at this point a1's like let me see your phone i said this is some real ass relationship type shit right here let me see your phone i can't a1 about to go home and play that cardi b honey <laughs> anyway when he asked to see her phone I was like, this bitch definitely deleted that shit, especially since she got into the argument with Kay Michelle the other day. She knows it's gonna get back to her husband. So if she was smart, she would have gone home and deleted that. And of course, when A1 went through her phone, there was nothing there, literally at all, conversation empty. So he asked her, if nothing's going on, then why is your chat, why is it empty? I said, oh chat, I said, this is not looking good for Miss Lyrica right now. Like, it's looking real bad, honey. You might just get a divorce. So of course, Lyrica's looking guilty AF. I mean, guilty, honey. Guilty. OJ Simpson, guilty, honey. Like, <laughs> she looking guilty. So A1 says to her, there should be something there, right? I said, mm-hmm, A1, you better ask her again. Lyrica says to A1, I don't keep all my texts. I said, bitch, you all ass lie. What do you mean you don't keep all your text messages? Uh-uh, honey. Uh-uh. So, of course, A1 knows better. He's not an idiot. You're not going to pull the wool over this man's eyes, Lyrica. Or should I say, you're not going to pull the nail polish over this man's fingernails, Lyrica. So, of course, the only thing Lyrica could do in this moment was act the fuck up. <laughs> when you are caught, you better throw a tantrum, honey. You better get that monkey off your back. But it was not gonna let this shit slide. So, Lyrica starts yelling about how she's not doing this with him and she's getting loud in this restaurant. When she started acting out like this, I said, yep, this bitch guilty, honey. We don't need a jury or a judge. She's snitching on herself just by the way she's reacting. She is snitching on herself. And A1 knew. He knew it. I said, yep. <laughs> I said, yo bitch is a whole ass cheating ass liar right now. So of course she tries to turn it around and bring up K. Michelle again and turn it around on K. Michelle, basically saying like K. Michelle is causing problems in her marriage. And so it's on site when she sees her, she's whooping her ass. I said, this ain't about K. Michelle, honey. This is about your trifling ass. Like, let's get it 
all the way right. Get it right, get it tight, girl. So she slaps a drink at the bar, back behind the bar. The bartender was looking like, these damn black people. <laughs> the bartender was pissed, honey. He's like, nah, I, I ain't get paid. I ain't get paid enough for this shit. Anyway. And then, of course, she then stormed out. She stormed, remember? So she got to storm out. <laughs> anyway, in confessional, A1 starts talking about how, you know, if if somebody was accusing him of doing something he knows he didn't do, he would laugh it, laugh it off. But the louder that Lyrica gets is basically telling him everything he needs to know. There's something more to the story that is not being said. So of course Lyrica is all up in the production Uber and she is fuming <laughs> and the producer is trying to talk to her and tell her to go back inside but she's basically saying no. She is saying she's not going back inside. She said fuck him, fuck Safari, fuck K. Michelle. She's beating her up when she sees her and she was telling them to get the cameras out of her face. I'm watching all this crap unfold and production basically tells her, you know, go back inside and hear him out. Hear what your husband has to say. Because you can't just, when you and your husband are having a heated argument, you can't just up and leave like that. Like, I don't know what kind of marriage y'all got, but that ain't how this shit works. <laughs> what the hell do I know? I ain't never been in no heated ass argument like that with my husband. So I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> But I know that 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 this ain't this ain't how it works, okay? The producer also says to her, "This is not about K. Michelle, so let's not make it about K. Michelle, because it's really not. It's about her and her trifling ass ways." So of course, Lyrica is big mad. When I say big mad, I mean, girl, big mad. She's humongo mad, yeah, like humongo mad, and. She's going in, yelling about she's gonna be a bitch and all this, and they get her to go back inside. She lucky A1 was even there <clears throat> when she, after she stormed out, cause had it been me, had I been A1, and my girl wants to act up like that, at, when I'm trying to get to the bottom of a situation, I would have left immediately after. Okay, bitch, I'm going home to pack your shit up. Since you want to act a damn fool in this here restaurant, we're going to see how much more of a fool you're going to act when you find that your shit is packed up. So she's back inside now and she's talking to A1. And of course, she starts talking about K. Michelle. Again, I said this is, this is the prime example of somebody deflecting, okay? Her and Rashida are real good at deflecting. So she starts talking about how K. Michelle and her saggy booty self <laughs> is causing problems in her marriage. And the real tea is that K. Michelle tried to fuck Safari. I said, why would you and Safari even be talking about that? How would you know that K. Michelle tried to fuck Safari? She's, she's making herself look even more guilty by trying to make K. Michelle look bad and say that K. Michelle is the real one that wanted to fuck Safari. K. Michelle can fuck whoever the hell she wants to fuck. You are married. K. Michelle is not. Let's not get it twisted here. This is about you, Lyrica. Why are we getting distracted and talking about who else wanted to fuck Safari? I'm sure a lot of people want to fuck Safari. You know? The man's dick is huge. <laughs> so, there's no surprise there. So, A1 says to Lyrica, if it's not true, then why are you so upset? And I said, once again, that she is lucky her man is as understanding as he is right now because had it been me, I wouldn't be asking this bitch any questions, okay? I would not be even there having an interview like her like my name was Zayn Lowe, like bitch, no. We're gonna figure this out some other way after I pack your shit up and you get the F out of my house. Come on now. Anyway, well her answer to this question was, I'm tired of mother effers trying me. I said, who's trying her? Who tried her? Nobody tried her. Your tea got spilled because you were being messy. So, of course, she starts yelling and saying to him, do you believe me or not? Only she said, so do you believe me or you motherfucking don't? And I was just like, who child to get him? <laughs> the ghetto, honey. We do not need 
this on our TV screens right now. Like, no. So then A1 goes to tell Lyrica that, you know, it's all good and gravy, but the gag is K. Michelle is not the only person that brought this to my attention. I said, oh, the plot just thicken, bitch. <laughs> the plot just thicken. And she's looking shook, of course. So he tells her that Marcus told him that uh, Brooke told him about the whole safari situation. And so she's like, Brooke can't say that. I said, oh yeah, she did. <laughs> A1 obviously reassures her that Brooke did indeed spill that tea to Marcus. And so in confessional, Lyrica started talking about how Brooke is supposed to be her friend. She doesn't understand why she's talking shit about her, blah, 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 blah. This is not classified as talking shit, I'm just saying. I was wondering if it counts as talking shit if you were having pillow talk with your man. Because pillow talk usually doesn't leave the bedroom. Because Marcus was not going to bring this up to A1 until A1 mentioned the fact that K. Michelle said it. So obviously if he's, if he brings that to him and then Marcus knows something, he's not gonna not say something, you know, but he was never going to go to A1 because he doesn't gossip. He a man, okay? Unlike the rest of the people on the damn show, they love to gossip. Marcus only said something because he was like, well, I heard that too. What are you gonna do? So Lyrica said, I'm not about to sit here and explain myself. And so A was like, oh, but you are. And then she's like, no, for something that I didn't do. So Lyrica tells him he has one more chance to pull this petty shit with her. And so A1 starts to go, so you threatening me? And what? What are you gonna do? <laughs> That's what he's asking her, what are you gonna do? So she starts talking about how she's staying at her mom's house tonight. I said, what in the immaturity is this? I could never be mad at my man and tell him I'm sleeping at my mom's house tonight, unless it was so drastic. But like, she's the one that's in the wrong. He's only trying to figure out what's going on in his relationship or outside of his relationship. And he's not wrong for that. So for her to be talking about, I'm going to my mom's house. I'm like, are you 16, bitch? Like, what? And so in my mind, I'm like, you guys have been married for not even two years. And this is what's going on. Like, why? Where do they do that at? So when she said she was going to her mom's house, <laughs> I said if he was truly petty, he would have said to her, why don't you go to Safari's house instead? And I would have just lost it. I would have said, nope, close the laptop, show's over, don't need to see anything else, I've heard it all. But instead, he just told her, go to your mother's house. And so she says, I am. <laughs> so he basically tells her he's gonna get to the bottom of this because what she's not gonna do is have him out here looking stupid. I said, you better tell the bitch, you better tell her. So he walks away and leaves her at the table. So Donatella, AKA Ty Dolla Sign's mother, I think, she was throwing some event, woman empowerment, I guess. I don't even remember what she said. Brooke, Princess, and I think Paris were all talking. Princess is out quite a bit for somebody that's pregnant. Yeah, when I was pregnant, I was not out at all. <laughs> I was just too vulnerable, you know? Cause when I did go out, it was problematic. So I just stayed my ass inside. And so they start kikiing and they start talking about K. Michelle and Lyrica having an issue. And so, Bro and so Paris was like, I told her. So then she also tells them about potentially rekindling things with K. Michelle because Bridget wants them to, but she did also say that she was nervous about it cause it could go really right or really wrong. You never know what you're gonna get with Kimberly or K. Michelle or whoever she decides she wants to be that day. So Princess starts talking about Ray J and that drama. <sighs> she basically says how she sent the DM that she received to Brandy and Brandy called her but she was on the phone so she didn't answer the call and so when she realized that Princess wasn't picking up she texts Princess and she was like you're not answering because you're scared. I said, hold on. Princess is whole ass pregnant. What what exactly would she be scared of, Brandy? I was like, uh-uh, this is not okay. Like, why is it, listen, when you're pregnant, people like to try it with you because you're pregnant. I was like, what the hell is in the water at the Norwood residence? Because her mom, Sonia, and Brandy, they're just acting up. And so when she says that uh 
Brandy basically threatened her. Paris was like, Cinderella said that? <laughs> when I say I was on the floor, you guys, I was on the floor. I'm like, there is no way she just called Brandy Cinderella. But that movie's iconic, so you better just get your life. If you guys have never seen, like, Cinderella with Brandy, get your life. It was at that moment that I realized I stand France all day long, okay? I stand her. Anyway, at this moment, uh, Brooke's eyes are going crazy like they're like going side to side she looks like the freaking cat clock from the Simpsons and so princess starts breaking it down for them and then she states that she wants to cancel her gender reveal party because of all this negativity and so they tell her like no you can't do that it's your first baby you know we know it sucks but at the end of the day, the gender reveal is not about them. It's about you, your happiness, and your new child, your new addition. But I totally am feeling princess in this because there were, when my baby shower was being planned, I so wanted to cancel it so many times. I was just like, no, literally the day of and the day before, I was ready to cancel it. Throw in the towel, bitch. It's over. So Donatella joins the convo, and I don't remember they were shading somebody at first, but I don't remember who Donatella had drama with last year except for Lyrica. I don't remember anybody else she had drama with, so I was like, who is Brooke shading right now? Brooke ends up excusing herself because in the distance, she saw the one and only Marcus. So she went to go and see him, and this got real messy real quick. Of course, he was not expecting to see Brooke, and he had a date with him, and so the date pulls up. Everything from this point on basically went downhill. When the date pulls up, Brooke's like, oh, is this your assistant? And so the date, her name is Stasia, is like, no, I'm definitely not his assistant. I said, oh, she is his assistant, all right. She assisted him in that bedroom because you're not, bitch. <laughs> Part of me was just wishing that the girl knew a little bit more so she could have said that line that I just said, but you know, can't have everything go our way. So she asked Marcus if this is his girlfriend. And of course, Marcus says the most fuckboy answer in the universe. And he says, well, you know. I said, no, she does not know. <laughs> Why are you laying her, Marcus? Because she has no idea. Salem was just eating and I got bare breast milk right here. I'm pissed. <laughs> like, let me just pull it down, honey. So the booby milk is off camera whatever so of course Brooke is pissed now and she's like to Marcus well when I talked to you this morning you didn't have a girlfriend so how long y'all been together for 12 hours <laughs> I was like oh my god Brooke is queen petty so of course Marcus tries to dismiss her and he tries to like give her a drink to get her to shut up because she's gonna ruin whatever he has going on with the homegirl beside him so Brooke says to him you don't want to hand me that drink right now. And so he kindly puts the drink right the fuck back on the bar. I said, I can't. So it was at this moment that I was like, Brooke is legitimately crazy. Like she's actually bonkers. Cuckoo bananas, bitch. So she basically went in confessional and said that Marcus is not allowed to be getting attached to anybody calling him his girlfriend or calling them his girlfriend she is just allowing allowing meaning that she has ownership over him jail <laughs> him to uh i believe her term was sow his oats aka fuck bitches get money i was like nah i would never ever tell a man that he could sew anything but some damn clothes bitch <laughs> like you better get your life. So of course, Brooke starts going in and asking Marcus if him and his girlfriend were together on her birthday. He spent Brooke's birthday with her. So Stasia's like, when's your birthday? But of course, Brooke is not talking to Stasia, so she ain't paying her no damn mind. So then Brooke starts asking if he was with that, with that girl when it was Christmas time, Thanksgiving time. If they were a couple when girl Kwanzaa Hanukkah New Year's Eve chat, <laughs> she was listening off every ha every damn uh, holiday, Saint Baptiste Day chat, every holiday. She's like, were were y'all together then? And so of course Stasia's like, were you really with her all those days? First of all, 
she asked if he was with her for Valentine's Day. And so my whole thing is if your man doesn't spend Valentine's Day with you, you got to wonder who he's spending it with. Don't let him tell you he at work, honey. <laughs> uh-uh. So Stassi is a whole ass fool if he if he didn't spend Valentine's Day with her and they were together. And so at this point I'm like, this girl lo is looking like she had never seen the show before and I know that's not the case. So I don't know why she's acting so clueless and oblivious to what's going on right in front of her. Brooke and Marcus step aside. Stasia kind of stands behind them. Brooke clarifies for Marcus what exactly she meant by him, you know, sowing his oats because he clearly got her effed up. She did not mean he could have a girlfriend. She meant he could have anything, you know, pertaining to sexual activities with other people because she ain't giving him no pum pum. So Marcus says, look, I got a hot ass date. And so Stasia then steps in to collect her man. Photos being inserted. <clears throat> and she tries to say, this is not a good time. As she's trying to grab Marcus, I said, bitch, you think you a telemarketer calling somebody's house around dinner time? What you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? This is not a good time. Like, what? So Brooke says, don't touch my booty. Don't do that. And then Stasia's like, are you really touching her, her ass right now, Marcus? And I'm just like, is this girl for real life? I can't. So of course, Marcus starts disrespecting the girl and telling her like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, you listening to her right now? And he tells her to chill. I'm sorry. This is not happening to me at no fucking party. Like, it's just not. I couldn't be Stasia. I couldn't be I couldn't be her. So he's pushing Stasia away. At this point, I'm like, Marcus is fuckboy of the year, honey. So Brooke yells out to Marcus that maybe he should tell Stasia if she plays her cards right, she might get a ring like her. I said. What? <laughs> I said, what? ring like you bitch what are you talking about and so marcus in confessional says that first of all brooke stole that ring from me at her mother's house i said "Ooh, <laughs> ooh!" he used the word stole i said oh no honey this is <laughs> wait till brooke sees this episode and so i was just like why wouldn't he brief homegirl on the Brooke situation, you know, just in case, you know, you never know. He should have briefed her on that whole entire situation before getting into some sort of relationship with her. Anyway, he ends up leaving with Stasia and he's basically embarrassed. So of course in this next scene, A1 is at his promo shoot. Apple Watts is there. And honestly, the vibe that Apple Watts and A1 are giving off, I kind of feel like they might get into something. Maybe, maybe not. A1's married, so I don't know. It could be a scandal, honey. We already have one scandal with A1 and Lyrica. Maybe we're in for another one. I don't know. I just get that vibe. So of course, A1 asks Apple if she has any bars for him today. And she's like, not today. When she says that, A1's like, you know, if Diddy was here and he asked you to rap for him, you gonna say no? And so I don't know why people always use that as a point of reference. <laughs> but it's true. Like, you have to be ready. Like, you know, stay ready, so you ain't gotta get ready kind of thing. She definitely effed up, I feel, when she said no because... I guess she should be prepared to rap at any given time if she's really about that life. So Ray J pulls up on them and Ray J introduces himself to Apple Watts and he's actually like, I've seen you before at the Lucci party and she's like, yeah, whatever. Ray J didn't really stick around so he gets into why he said that he's just trying to avoid drama, that he's having a gender reveal soon and he wants... A1 and Lyrica to come to the gender reveal and so A1 starts talking about you know if Lyrica gonna be there I'm not gonna be there and I was like childish <laughs> childish this is not about Lyrica and your problems this is about your friend's gender reveal you know I think you should go but whatever and he says this at this point Apple Watts is like peace up A town down okay she out of here She's like, no, nope, don't need to know none of the, none of their business. I don't want to know anything about it. I'm out. She said she just got in good with Lyrica and she's not trying to F that up. So she doesn't want to know any of their personal business. So A1 starts telling Ray J about the drama between Lyrica and himself and of course Safari. And of course Ray J's shocked. He starts saying that first he heard it from K. Michelle and then he heard it from Marcus who heard it from Brooke and Brooke and Lyrica are friends and so... Ray J's like two, <laughs> two people. <laughs> and 
I was like, oh my gosh. And so um, they're like, two, two is too much. Like, that's a lot of people. And I was like, I agree. If you hear a rumor about your wife from more than one source, honey, that's getting to be too messy like you gotta nip that shit in the bud so I don't blame them for saying that that's too many people especially the nature of the rumor you know and it's two people that don't talk K Michelle and um Brooke Valentine are not friends so it's not like she heard it from K Michelle you know so A1 tells Ray J he needs answers and I'm like <laughs> me too honey I want to get to the bottom of this tea Ray J says Safari's coming out to Hollywood for K. Michelle's show and so maybe he should talk to him then. He also states that, you know, Safari's the homie. He doesn't really think that he would do something like that. They took sperm tests together and all that so it would kind of be really crappy if Safari did do this. Well, A1 says that he's expecting Safari to give him the real since he's the bro. So in the next scene, I'm like obsessed with K. Michelle's hat and I need it in my life. If y'all know where she got that damn hat, please tell me chat because I'm about to order it I don't care where it's from I want that hat now so K Michelle and Paris are meeting up and K Michelle talks in confessional about how it's not about the amount of money that Paris spent on her credit card it is the principal and I totally get that so when she sees Paris she compliments her and it's good vibes right out the gate so K Michelle starts telling Paris how it looks so beautiful and that you know she'll be mad at her but then she just looks at those eyes and she can't be mad at her anymore they literally look genuinely happy to see each other and it was kind of refreshing you know there's so much negativity on love and hip-hop when two people can like mend their friendship it's cute Paris starts breaking it down from her perspective and she's like it was $50 I used it on the uber but like you calling me a thief on this huge platform to this day there's people that comment under my photo calling me a thief like you kind of ruined my shit my, my life you know it's embarrassing i'm actually glad that she got to come on the show and clarify this because people are ruthless if they think they have information that is true they will literally label you with it and try to i guess attack your character and so i'm glad she kind of got to come on and clarify that she didn't just take k michelle's credit cards out her wallet and was swiping it at neiman marcus and mother f and Saks fifth ave you know what i mean she actually just used it on the uber and you know she probably should not have done that she probably should have given k her money back but she didn't and that's why she's being labeled as a thief but the way k michelle had put it out to the world it sounded way worse than it was and so you know when you have a large fan base and they're crazy <laughs> they're gonna go and attack whoever you say you don't like you know k michelle starts crying and talking about how much it hurt her and i was just like okay <laughs> she's basically saying that uh Paris was her best friend and her sister and she didn't appreciate that she did that to her because now she feels like she can't trust anybody saying that she works hard for her money and blah 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 so Paris said that Kay is always playing the victim and then so she asked her so you don't think you owe me an apology K Michelle does actually apologize to uh Paris in this moment Paris accepts it and then Paris also apologizes to K. Michelle and they hug it out and everything is restored, you know? I just hope that their relationship is solid now and they're not it's not gonna turn sour again because y'all know K. Michelle is ruthless with that tongue of hers. So the next scene is the gender reveal and it is going to be a little sh a, a little messy you know what is a baby shower or a gender reveal without a little family drama hmm Ray J says that Princess has a few words to say to everybody and so Princess is standing there and she thanks everybody to, uh, for coming out from all the way from Houston and supporting her at the gender reveal and so at this moment Ray J says anything else and so Princess is looking at him like what the fuck else would I have to say and so I'm like I know this man is not trying to get her to do the apology right here in front of all these people right now you are not really trying it with this pregnant woman right now like no what are you thinking and so I was like you do not put somebody on the spot like that unacceptable okay <laughs> Well, in confessional princess was like Ray is even lucky that he was invited to the gender reveal <laughs> I was like 
Oh, bitch. Oh, no. Because at this point, they're pretending like there's some big old happy family and that's not the case. So they do the gender reveal. Obviously, we know that they were having a girl. Ray J really wanted a little girl and Princess really wanted a little boy, but they got a little girl and they're happy either way. So they go to talk to... Uh, Sonia, which is Ray J's mother, and Brandy. So Ray J's talking to them and he's like, and Princess has agreed to do a public apology. And so Princess looks up at him and she's like, I did? <laughs> and I was like, uh-uh, Ray J, no, no, don't you do it, do not do it. Princess starts laughing because she thinks it's freaking hilarious. And so Sonia's like, it's not funny. So his mom starts going in on Princess about how she embarrassed him publicly. And so Princess starts talking about how, how, how. <laughs> and so Sonia starts telling her what she did on social media. And so Princess says, have you taken it into consideration what your son did? You know, why aren't you telling him to apologize to me? Sonia says to Princess, I'm not trying to upset you. You know, I've lost a child before, so we can take this up after you have the baby. And so Princess says, absolutely not. I don't care to deal with it after the fact. Like, I don't care to deal with it at all. Sonia's like, I don't care either, Princess. And I was like, clearly you do, ma'am, because you are upset. So Princess says to Sonia, this is your son, and I have my mom, and that's all I need. His mom is like, and, never, and don't you forget that. And Princess says, and don't you forget that. Woo child, it was getting heated between the mama and the, the, the new mama. So Brandy's there quiet for a bit and then Brandy decides she's gonna step in because Sonia was walking away. So Brandy is like, we have to respect, we have to respect. Sonia says she wasn't raised right. And so Princess is like, and you were? <laughs> I said, uh-uh honey, this is getting messy. Of course Ray J's over here talking about some Stop, stop, stop. Sounded like damn Sammy from Jersey Shore. I said, if Ray don't shut his damn mouth up. At this point, I was like, memes really be putting people in their feelings because I can so relate to posting a meme and somebody getting real mad about it. <laughs> so Princess is crying and she says that she's so done with this. She tells Brandy that they can see the baby when she's born, but she's absolutely done. And so Brandy's like done with what? And Princess is like everything. So Brandy says that she only has a problem with the fact that everyone is in their business. And she basically said that Princess is making them look bad when she posts on social media airing out shit that she doesn't need to air out. Especially because she changed her name from Princess love Norwood to just back to princess love. So princess is like, so what? Like, so what that I took down Norwood off my name? Who cares? Why do you guys care? It's none of your business. This is literally something that's happening between me and my husband. Yes, you guys are extended family, but it has nothing to do with you. And that's princess's point. And so Brandy tells princess that she needs to, you know, be a good example for the baby that she's carrying. She tells Brandy that her baby will be fine and tells Brandy that she needs to be a good example for her daughter. She basically calls Brandy out for always clapping back on Shade Room and stuff. Brandy tries to say, you know, I'm not perfect, but I'm also not a punk. And so Princess is like, and neither am I. <laughs> and I said, oh, she making these bitches eat their words today. So Ray J, Ray J is like, wow, stop, stop. <laughs> Brandy was like, I just don't want to be embarrassed, you know? We just don't want to be embarrassed. For a moment in time, that should have been kept private. And then she tells Princess that she wants to fight for no reason. So then Princess went far with it, honey. Princess said to Miss Brandy, the Brandy, <laughs> she said to her, I'm not taking marriage advice from somebody that can't even stay in a relationship for longer than three months. I said, oh my God. I said, oh my God, what is going on? Like, she really took it there. Like, <gasps> oh! <laughs> so Brandy didn't even acknowledge that statement, okay? Uh, she basically told her that her and Ray J deserve, deserve a chance at being good parents to their child. They can't do that if everybody's in their business. So Princess says, we're in the spotlight. People in our business is inevitable. So Brandy says to her, I understand that, but you don't have to add to that. And I actually agree with this. I feel like if you are going through something in your marriage, you don't just come 
and put that all over social media and like you know make a big stink about it especially when it's pertaining to your marriage because I feel like you know it's sacred and I don't think that every Tom Dick and Harry needs to know what's going on inside your damn bedroom it's the same with like Tiana Taylor and Iman talking about their threesome thing like Ugh, like keep that shit to yourself, ho. Like, you know, doing too much. Brandy reaches in for a hug. And if you guys see Princess's face in this moment, I was like, oh, Princess is so over Brandy right now. And I am here for it. 100%. Ray walks away and he's like, it wasn't supposed to be like that. Princess says that Brandy is full of shit. She's like how she tries to act like sister of the year or sister-in-law of the year. But behind closed doors, she's sending her threatening text messages. Keep that same energy, Brandy. Keep it. So Princess says that until the family stops seeing her as a villain, she doesn't need to see them anymore. They are the problem here, not her. Relatable. <laughs> so Princess says that she's not filtering shit just because people are watching. And so her friend's like, why do they even care? And so Princess tells her friend, like, it's just about image to them. Like, everything is image, image, image. They don't care about anything else but how they look. So, of course, still at the gender reveal, Lyrica approaches Brooke about the safari drama. So Brooke tells her she ain't getting no dick at home in her marriage. <laughs> and so Lyrica denies it. And so Brooke's like, you damn well know A1 ain't dropping that D in you and blah, blah, blah. And I was like. <laughs> Brooke starts imitating how Lyrica was acting at the uh, Facebook Live thing with Safari. And so Lyrica starts saying how Safari flirts with everybody and that he was flirting with her too. I said, the difference here, boo, is that you are married, okay? You are married! And it's Safari. <laughs> Yo, man's friend, what, what you doing flirting, boo? What you doing? I can't stand when people do stuff and think that it's not gonna, you know, come back. Especially when they do it in the circle. Like, get out of the circle. Don't be trying to, listen, I can't. So Brooke tells Lyrica to stop pretending like this information just came out of the sky. And she tells her to keep it all the way real. So Lyrica starts asking Brooke where these supposed text messages are. When she said this, I'm like, why you acting like you ain't delete the damn text? And why you acting like they're in Brooke's phone and not yours? Like, bitch. Stop it. Stop it. Too much deflecting going on here. You're guilty, bitch. Hammer down. You're guilty. So Brooke asked her the question back, like, where, where are the texts, you know? And so Lyrica asked her again, where are these supposed text messages? Where are the receipts? So Brooke's like, you fucked him, didn't you? <laughs> I said, Brooke! Brooke! And so at this point, Lyrica's a big freaking mad and then Brooke is like to her you fucked him and you liked it <laughs> I said this show is too much it's too much and so once again Lyrica smacks whatever the hell was on the table separating them she smacks it into Brooke's direction it does hit Brooke but it looked like streamers or something like I don't even know what it was security obviously steps in and then Brooke was not flinching at all she was literally just standing there basically taunting Lyrica. Lyrica calls her a fake ass bitch. She flips the table over onto Brooke, or she tries to, and Brooke is still just standing there not even budging, like she's so unbothered, it's hilarious. So Brooke's like, why are you that mad if it's not true? <laughs> that is the question everybody wants to know. If you know that she ain't do the shit, why are you so mad? Why? You flipping tables, you doing the most, let's have a toast, like, come on, sis doing too much. So Lyrica tells her she ain't never been her friend and told her that she ain't any different from the rest of these Hollywood bitches. Tells her that she needs to go hang out with Kimberly. And so Brooke is like, that's how you feel? <laughs> and so Lyrica is mad yelling yes. And Brooke tells her, but you told me Safari's dick wrap around his leg. I said, <laughs> that's what I said. I said, I had no words, bitch. I said, oh my gosh, come on. 
the tea. I feel like this little scene has been posted like a million times on Instagram, but Brooke is like, she got a husband and a side because she lit and she just walked off. I said, I can't. I can't. <laughs> you cannot have a gender reveal without some type of drama. I, I, you just can't do it. I'm just glad it wasn't the baby shower because <laughs> I hope they don't do the baby. Like, did they do the baby shower on the show too? Because, ooh, ooh. So, the last and final scene of the night, Safari meets up with A1. And so, there's a car in between them. It was much like the Cisco, what was it, Peter drama? Ugh. Anyway, there's a car in between them. A1's like, what the fuck are you doing testing my wife? Safari's so like, it is what it is. A1's like, what the hell do you mean it is what it is? A1 starts emptying his pockets, chow. Okay, taking out his keys and all that. He's putting it uh, aside onto the car. And so Safari's so like, why are you emptying your pockets like you're about to do something, you know? And so A1's like, what do you mean it is what it is? And so A1's like, you're supposed to be my bro. And so Safari's so like, it ain't even like that. And so I'm thinking we're about to get like a revelation here. Like, he's about to you know, spill the tea that it's not even what he thinks. I thought he was gonna show him the text, you know? So Safari's like, what's the issue? It ain't even like that. And so A1's like, what's it like? So Safari says, as I quote, bitches like me. If she likes me too, it is what it is. I said, and A1 was like, bitches like you? Bitches like you? Child, if A1 didn't run his little ass over to the other side of the car to beat Safari's ass, <laughs> And so security obviously steps in at this point and that's when the episode ended and we're gonna have to wait till next week to see what happened between the two of them but they were good and got herself and Safari in some hot water. So tell me what your favorite scene was from this week's episode and if you didn't already give me my like I suggest you do so because I promise you next week's episode won't be going up unless I have 5,000 likes. You guys almost got there. I was like literally there was more than enough views on the video for me to get all my likes. And it's not like the people that like that it's not like the people that watched and didn't like the video dislike the video because you know then there would be an even number of dislikes and likes but honey y'all just ain't pressing the like button like it's an extra job for you to do if you don't press this damn like button <laughs> but yeah that's basically it i love you all and i don't know if i'm gonna see you next week i would love to you know i would love to see you next week but i don't know if it's gonna happen so we will see i love you all and i'll definitely see you in the next one